Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Today we're going to talk about how to talk about what you do. This is a really big sticking or point for VAs or where they get stuck and it actually keeps them from doing any networking. Today's quote is from sales legend Zig Ziglar and the quote is you can have anything everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. I know this doesn't say anything about what you do and that's sort of the point you'll understand why it's the perfect quote for today when you listen to the episode. Let's go. Today we're talking about how to talk about what you do. This comes up when you're networking, but it also comes up really any time somebody asks you what it is that you do. I still actually struggle with answering this question well sometimes. How come? Because a lot of the people who ask me what I do are my personal connections, maybe like you. And the topic seems really big. Like I have to tell them I teach virtual assistants. What if they don't know what a virtual assistant is? They aren't going to be a virtual assistant. So why should I bore them with the description of what a VA does? I'm sure you've probably been in exactly the same situation, but we need to answer the question. So what happens? You either stammer out a few words and don't really sound like you know what you're talking about or even worse, the opposite. You get that wonderful verbal diarrhea and just keep talking as you try to poorly describe what it is that you do for your clients. Their eyes glaze over and you're pretty sure that they're thinking they wish you didn't, they didn't even ask you that question to begin with, right? We also sometimes get fixated on making what we do sound interesting and that sometimes doesn't work out the way we want it to either. Talking about ourselves is really difficult for a lot of us. I would rather talk about somebody else all day long than pump my own tires and I'm probably thinking that you are feeling the same way. So when somebody asks us or asks you, what do you do? It can feel like we need to brush it aside in favor of simply a more comfortable subject. But we shouldn't. What we do is really important and it's actually very interesting to a lot of people. They have questions and many of them are genuinely curious to know how it all works, especially the last few years, right? So let's get into answer and into how to answer that question better. First, let's talk about elevator pitches. I very much dislike the standard elevator pitch. If you followed me at all, or if you've heard any of my training, you know I am not a fan of the elevator pitch. I even have a training called Ditch the Pitch to, to get more clients. They do have their place, and sometimes you do need to have it. But in general, I think in networking, we think we need to use it too often. And so many people just simply do them wrong, and it makes it really painful for everybody else around them. The good news is, if you hate them too, I'm going to teach you a better way. The reason I think elevator pitches just don't work is that anybody who learns how to write one or to recite one is taught to hit on all the points they want the audience to know, right? They make you brainstorm it all out and then pull it all together into one short sentence or not always a short sentence. And so we try to pack our name, our title, our company name and everything we possibly can into one very long run on sentence quite often. And it doesn't sound natural or interesting. I remember driving to a weekly networking meeting that I went to it was every Wednesday morning, we had breakfast, and I would practice my pitch on the way in the car, I had my phone hanging up, and I would just hit the record button so that I could get it under one minute. Because the time limit to recite it is usually one minute, or sometimes two minutes, right? Sometimes it's even 30 seconds. But that makes it a whole minute long run on sentence. And if you actually set a timer and start talking about anything else, you really understand how long a minute is. It's, it's a lot longer than it needs to be. And the audience is left trying to follow your whole thought process just to keep up. It's really just uncomfortable for everyone in my experience. I've witnessed a lot of them and that's what I'm telling you. The person reciting it is trying to make sure that they don't miss anything. And the person listening um, who is trying to make sure that they understand what it is or what you're trying to say. 
further to that, if the audience is not full of their target client, or if that, you know, if you are going to an event where you're standing up and you're not talking to a whole bunch of target clients of yours, or if you don't even have a target client, then as the VA, sometimes you're going to blurt out something that's just too general and it won't land with anybody anyway. Something like, hi, my name is Tracy Daviero. My company is called XYZ VAs. I'm a virtual assistant who specializes in helping small business owners with their marketing tasks like newsletters and blog posts so they can get more visibility for their business using a variety of online platforms. Working with a VA will save you time and money. I know that that didn't take me a minute to say, and I probably wouldn't recite it that quickly. I read that one. Um, and that's not even a terrible one. But the point is, that's number one way not to answer the question, what do you do? Which is really all anybody wants to know when they are approaching you in a networking situation. Even if you're standing up at one of those business breakfasts, all anybody around the table wants to know is what do you do? I remember at that breakfast, there was um, one woman who would come in. She was actually, a, she worked at a car dealership and she was excellent at doing the elevator pitch when it came around to it, because all she would tell us was her name, where she worked, what she did. And then she would tell us what the special of the week was, right? We have this particular vehicle or we're having a sale on this. We're having a friends and family special. It was actually interesting and memorable every single time. And I think that that is much better way to use that time slot that you get in those things. Here's the other way that you should not answer the question, what do you do? And it's an extremely popular way for virtual assistants to answer this question. They say, I'm a virtual assistant. And then they stop. They say nothing else. I can't tell you how many VAs I know and I have heard answer that question with just those four words. Both of those to me, both of those ways are just plain wrong. When you're speaking with somebody, anybody, about what it is you do, think one word, conversation. You don't need to cover everything that you do or know, especially not in one big breath, and neither do they. You want to break it up. You want to make it interesting, and you want to make it, above all, conversational. When somebody asks you what you do, you can say this. I'm a virtual assistant who helps health professionals or whoever your target market is, market their businesses or whatever your services are, right? I'm a virtual assistant who helps health professionals market their businesses. Then stop or then add the words, what do you do? Either way, you're inviting conversation about a very simple topic. I haven't talked about all the services I use or how long I've been doing it or who specifically my, my clients are or what the daily tasks are. I haven't included any of those things because that is what can come out in the conversation, right? You want to have, you want to invite that conversation about a very simple topic. And I usually use exactly this tactic if I'm meeting somebody for the first time. I'm a virtual assistant coach and trainer that helps women set up their own business. What do you do? And if I know the person, I say I'm a virtual assistant coach and trainer that helps women set up and market their own business. And sometimes that starts a conversation and sometimes it doesn't. If it's not a business person I'm talking to who doesn't need that extra, what do you do? Um, I just leave it off. And But it's it's enough as an answer to just literally tell somebody what it is that you do. And we need to remember that not everybody's looking to purchase our services. And as a result, they don't need to hear every last thing that we do in our business, whether it's our services, whether it's who we help, whether it's the, the platforms that we use, or whether it's our day to day, you know, what our day to day looks like. Sometimes they're genuinely just being curious. In a business networking situation, they're probably being more than curious, but still they may not be in need of a VA right then. So enter conversation, questions, answers, back and forth. You, know, you learn a little something about them. They learn a little something about you. That's networking, right? Can you help them with their business? Can they help you with yours? That's all you're really trying to figure out. And yes, that leads us back to today's quote. Zig Ziglar was a master of sales or is a master of sales. I'm not sure. Um, I worked at a sales job for a small career company many years ago, and we were very well trained. We were strategic. We worked target markets. We closed sales. It really was a fun job, despite the fact that we needed to sell our services every single day. I don't like sales either, but there is a way to do it that makes it easy. And I remember we followed people like Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar. They were really huge in the 90s. It was all about sales, sales, sales. 
But despite the fact that Zig was definitely a salesman, this quote describes our service industry so well. You can have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. Helping others is what we do. It is the very basic principle of the VA industry. We are support professionals. We are virtual assistants. So to get what we want, we need to help as many clients as we can or as we want to, right? You build your business the way you want it. So how do we know if we can help someone? Conversations. There's that word again. Learn to describe what you do so it makes sense to people. Invite them to have a conversation about it with you. Can you help them? Yes. Then start helping them. Can they help you? Maybe. If they can't be your client, can they refer other people who you can help? And if you can't help them, can you refer somebody to them who can help them? Then you're helping two people. Take it from Zig and me. Answer the question, what do you do better? And it will absolutely change your business. This is exactly what I help virtual assistants do. As a virtual assistant coach and trainer, I help you find the words that describe what you do, and I help you find the people that you should be talking to. And if we work together, trust me, I will help you reach out to those people, and you're going to hear, I will make you reach out to them, but I will help you reach out to those people so that you can get clients, and you do get clients. I'll help you get clarity around all of it, and I will cheer you on as you walk through the steps to do it. I've helped hundreds of virtual assistants through their challenges and got them on their way to growing their business and the lifestyle that they dream of. I'd love to do the same for you. You can work with me privately, or you can join the Virtual Circle, my mastermind group for virtual assistants. Check it out at yourvamentor.com slash TVC as in the virtual circle. I bet it's exactly what you need to start running the VA business you dream of. Reach out to me if you're interested in starting your journey today. That's all I've got for you this week. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time.